So thanks very much for the uh, opportunity to uh, tell you a bit about Oxford Biomedica. So we're a public company on the London Stock Exchange, so I draw your attention to uh, forward-looking statements. So we are a cell and gene therapy company uh, based in the UK. Uh, we expect the cell and gene therapy market to grow to be a multi-billion dollar segment in the next five to 10 years. Uh, we see a lot of upcoming product launches such as Strimvelis, and we very much hope the first uh, CD19 targeting CAR-T products. Um, we think that lentiviral vectors have some key advantages uh, over other vector types. Certainly in ex vivo therapies where cells are dividing, you need an integrating vector solution. And Biomedica has always been very focused on in vivo use of lentiviral vectors. And now we've got some very nice convincing data on long-term efficacy uh, to support the uh, claim we all want to develop over time of one-off uh, treatments. We have our own proprietary lentivector gene delivery platform. Um, we've been developing this over 20 years and have uh, built up a, a, a good combination of uh, IP, technology, uh, experienced employees, uh, GMP bioprocessing, and uh, uh, laboratory facilities. So we have a bit of a, a track record emerging now. Uh, we work with Novartis to support uh, GMP production of Vector for their CTL019 uh, 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 CAR-T product. I'll talk a bit more about that. We've signed agreements with uh, Green Cross and Immune Design, and others are in discussion. And uh, we have our own product portfolio, uh, which I'll talk a bit about, and have some royalty streams that we're entitled to. So that was the whole talk. So. Um, Two things, lentiviral vectors um, are great for in vivo uh, uh, gene delivery. Um, we've done direct administration of lentis uh, to the striatum in, in a Parkinson's program. I'll tell you a little bit about. Lentis have quite a large uh, payload capacity, up to nine kilobases. So there are some genes you can fit into a lenti that are difficult to fit into an AAV. Uh, there's uh, no pre-existing immunity. And we've now treated over 60 patients using our vectors with cumulative patient safety data uh, of over 150 years. So this is a maturing in vivo technology. A lot of people, of course, think of lentis in the ex vivo context. And uh, that's just an example of uh, us uh, and how we work with Novartis in the CAR-T field. And we also have our own CAR-T program targeting the solid tumor antigen uh, 5T4. So our business model uh, is uh, somewhat hybrid. We uh, work with partners on their programs to help them uh, in process development using our own expertise we built up for our own programs. So we have a good revenue stream there and uh, royalties on net sales on, on certain products. And if you look on the right-hand side, uh, we uh, have developed our own products and we are now uh, in a recent announcement seeking to uh, spin out the key uh, clinical or late preclinical programs uh, into new, new companies or indeed outlicense them to partners. Uh, we've already partnered some of our programs, such as a couple of uh, uh, ocular programs with Sanofi, and uh, we continue to invest in the Lentivector platform. So brief um, overview of our very active CAR-T partnership with Novartis. Uh, so this is a 2014 deal with significant uh, upfront payments and royalties on net sales of products. It was initially a three-year contract to provide uh, GMP uh, production of lentiviral vectors for uh, clinical trial supply and we hope next year commercial supply. Um, uh, we are working to develop uh, a couple of different processes we call one process A, which is uh, adherent cell factory processes, uh, as well as uh, serum-free suspension processes or process B. So we've now um, executed on this uh, uh, with multiple batches of CTL019 delivered to Novartis to support global clinical development and uh, a number of confirmed purchase orders for next year. And we are now developing process B up to the 200 liter scale, 
with validation batches underway now. And uh, we are working very intensively uh, to support uh, Novartis' BLA uh, for CTL019 um, with approval expected in 2017 uh, due to their breakthrough therapy designation. So in terms of uh, forward-looking uh, uh, statements, uh, the BLA CMC section will be based on our process A and we're the sole manufacturer currently and uh, there's the potential for royalties uh, later in 2017 onwards. Uh, we work on Novartis on a second unnamed CAR-T program as well. So we see um, a lot of companies, uh, many are here, uh, working on lentiviral vectors now in the clinic and a number uh, at the bottom who are preclinical. And if you really put side by side the number of AAV vector uh, trials in the world with that of lentis, it's uh, pretty close to each other. So just to turn to products, IP, and facilities. This is our product pipeline. Um, I'm not gonna run through them all. This is a bit of a busy slide, but just the three chunks, the, the top five products are our own uh, wholly owned products and we are working to spin out these programs into separate NUCOs and are in uh, out licensing discussions. We have already partnered two programs with Sanofi uh, for Stargardt's disease and Usher syndrome, both large genes for inherited retinal diseases which are above the AV packaging capacity. Uh, those programs are ongoing uh, at Sanofi um, and we're entitled to development milestones and royalties. And there's a bunch of uh, programs at the bottom uh, where we've licensed our IP to Novartis, GSK, and Immune Design, where we have some long-term revenue potential. So just one product I'm gonna talk about today. Our lead program in Parkinson's disease is called OXB102. In terms of mechanism of action, there are uh, at least two. AAV programs delivering the AADC gene to the putamen in Parkinson's patients to convert L-DOPA taken orally into dopamine, which helps potentiate uh, the oral therapy. We use Alenti with a larger packaging, a packaging capacity to deliver three genes to allow conversion of tyrosine, which is a, a, a amino acid always present in cells, into dopamine. This means we can increase the tonic steady state level of dopamine in, uh, in the striatum. Of course, delivering AADC, we can also fine tune that with a uh, more efficient conversion of L-DOPA to dopamine. So we hope that the two uh, uh, exogenous and endogenous pathways together allow us to have a, a differentiated pharmacology compared to uh, AAV-based approaches for Parkinson's. So we've already carried out a phase one study, um, uh, which is uh, first data was published in The Lancet. And I'm just gonna show you one slide on efficacy out to three years now. And we expect to start our next phase one, two study uh, with an optimized product and an optimized clinical protocol and delivery in the first half of next year. So this is one times dose, two times dose, five times dose, uh, mapped out versus uh, historical controls. And we're looking at the improvement in the UPDRS part three motor score uh, here. So you can see one year, two year, three year data, pretty stable, uh, which is very, very encouraging for us. And versus uh, historical controls, uh, a significant signal. Um, so this is a 15 patient study carried out in Paris and Cambridge in the UK. Uh, so there's some dose-related improvement. Uh, the effects are durable, and we think that this is firm support to, uh, to fund the next study with uh, a, a five to 10 times more potent product called OXB102. In terms of the ongoing proprietary R&D activity, uh, we will continue to develop uh, preclinical programs in a number of uh, orphan ocular diseases uh, we're interested in a number of CNS uh, diseases outside of Parkinson's. We have respiratory uh, development activities, and we think the lung is potentially a great target organ for, for lentes. 
And we have a uh, collaboration announced uh, a couple of months ago uh, for gene-modified NK cell therapeutics with Green Cross Lab Cell, who had uh, an IPO recently on COSDAC. Uh, we're also investing on the LentiVector platform to keep our leadership position in vector and production technologies. Uh, we have a very promising technology called TRIP that can help optimize titers of difficult uh, cargoes. And we're working very hard on packaging and producer cell lines, which could provide another step change in yields and reduction of cost of goods. Uh, we are investing very heavily in the industrialization of uh, lenti production technologies, focusing on serum-free suspension, uh, bioreactor processes, 200-liter scale and above. In terms of our IP, uh, we uh, developed a lot of the seminal third-generation minimal lentiviral vector IP, um, and uh, that is uh, running out 2017-18. We have a number of safety features which are uh, very beneficial out to 2021, 2023, some downstream IP to 29, and this uh, trip manufacturing technology further. And like uh, a lot of peers here, we keep a lot of our trade secrets and know-how proprietary, and uh, we have a, an active program to license our IP to others to uh, try to enable uh, the whole field whenever we can. So we're based in Oxford in the UK, a bit of a giveaway with the name. Um, we have three separate GMP facilities, uh, two opposite our headquarters and one uh, around 10 miles away. So we have the potential for dual supply. Uh, we're an hour away from Heathrow with uh, 250 employees to date. Um, we have lots of labs. Uh, which have recently opened uh, and specified to be uh, optimized for lenti process development, safety testing, and things that are genuinely enabling, such as three category three labs for the all-important safety uh, testing. So in terms of our future vision and summary, we, uh, I think probably like everyone in the room, uh, passionately believe that cell and gene therapy will grow into a multi-billion dollar uh, sector in the next five to ten years, and hopefully along with small molecules and biologics become a new third pillar for the pharma and biotech industry. Uh, we think lentiviral vectors have uh, uh, a lot of advantages and uh, key applications that are becoming commercial reality now. Uh, we'll continue to invest in various aspects of the LentiVector gene delivery platform, both in vivo and ex vivo. Uh, people have sometimes said that the future of lentis is ex vivo. We think uh, the best days of in vivo applications are still to come. We've now invested over the last uh, couple of years, uh, we've announced uh, approximately 26 million pounds in CapEx. So we now do have world-class facilities and capabilities to do GMP support, not only for clinical trial supply, but potentially uh, commercial supply. And we have uh, product interests in our own products, uh, in some preclinical pipeline, and also in a number of partners' products, which uh, diversifies uh, a lot of the uh, risk in, in the company. Thanks very much. <laughs>